Well, I'm Chris and this is my how to test a capacitor video. Now these are start and run capacitors for single phase electric motors, 110, 220, air conditioners, air compressors, washers, dryers. That's what we're doing in this video. Okay, so this is a 110 volt air compressor. It has two capacitors, one's a start and one's a run. So the washing machine motor has a cover and when you take the cover off, the capacitor is hiding out back there. The point is to locate your capacitor when you find your capacitor, this thing is dangerous, it can shock you. You need to take an insulated handle screwdriver, touch the two terminals, and you'll see them spark if it had a charge. We're going to demonstrate that in test number two, but just be careful because this thing can shock you. And if you're on a concrete ground, AC current is seeking the ground, and that's how people die by electrocution or get shocked and burned up real bad. So you cannot play games with AC power. So once you got it discharged, you know it's good, then it's safe to take the wires off and get it out. So we're going to test this thing three different ways. The first way is the right way and the only way really you should be testing it. The second way is the dangerous way, but it actually makes a lot of sense. The third way is the pointless way and we'll show them all. So first of all, your meter has to have that symbol right there. So if your meter does not have a symbol like this, you have to get one like this because you're not going to 100% be able to check the capacitor. So these three meters this is the only one that has it and it's right there so let's go ahead and switch it on now this is combined with the diode sending power in one direction so we need to change it to there now we're measuring in microfarads that's how you check a capacitor let's do it always discharge it it's good this is the easiest test in the world and of all time all you do is connect the leads to the capacitor and you're looking for a value 236 you can clearly see that flip it around do this about five times to make sure you get consistent numbers and let it settle 236 234 let it settle do it again do it five times 234 233 okay you got to look on your capacitor and hopefully the numbers are still there we're looking for numbers that look like that so we got 233 to 280 mfd that's microfarads so that's giving us our range. So we have to be in that range for this to be a good capacitor. So what do we end up getting? If we got 233 to 280, let's check it one more time, 235, 234. So capacitor is good. This capacitor was giving me trouble and you can see it's on that low range. I went ahead and bought a new one anyway, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so this is a star capacitor on an air compressor, 210 to 260, the UF, that's the microfarads. Okay, 247, remember flip it around, play with it. So 247, we're good, this is a good capacitor. Because this is a run capacitor off the same air compressor, it's showing a value of 40 microfarads plus or minus 5%. So what does that mean? So you take your 40 microfarads, multiply them by a percentage of five, and it's gonna give you two. So that means that this capacitor must be in the range of minus 2 which is 38 to plus 2 so 38 to 42 microfarads is what we're looking for so let's test it 35.5 flip it play around with it do it a few times this is very interesting because this is off an air compressor that I got from work that is bad and it starts up and it trips the breaker and guess what we just found? We're looking for 38 to 42. We're getting 35.5 microfarads. So this run capacitor is actually bad. That's why it's very important to test the capacitance with the correct meter because the other two tests, we're not going to be able to check that like we did. So we got two good ones and one bad one. Okay, so the second test is a dangerous test, but in emergency situations, you may have to do it. Wear safety glasses, wear gloves, whatever you got to do, protect yourself. Do not do this outside on the ground. Be careful. Now, when this is plugged in, we got live power right here, so we're not going to be touching anything. We're going to plug it in and charge the capacitor. So be very careful. You cannot play games with AC power. It will shock you, it will burn you, and it can kill you. So we're going to go ahead and plug that up right there. Just like that, we're not going to touch it. We're going to plug it in for one second, and we're going to charge the capacitor. You be very careful if you dare try this. And plugging it in for one second and then pulling it back out. One, that's it. 
take an insulated handle screwdriver, you're going to touch the two terminals and it's going to do like a little firecracker showing you that this is holding a charge. Dangerous test, but we can clearly see it's holding a charge. Now you got to do that really good before you start touching this. Make sure this thing has no juice in it. Got this unplugged? Be very careful when you do this. I don't like showing this on my channel. Be safe with that test. This test is really the most pointless test of all time. I hate this test. It doesn't really show you anything. All it's going to do is show you that it's taking a charge. It doesn't show you if it's filling all the way up or anything like that. So, so we're on the 200K setting on ohms. So whenever you put your probes on there, it's going to start charging up. Okay, let's backwards. Just switch them. That's what you're going to have to do. Just switch them if it's reading negative. We're going to read this. See, it's already went to overload. That's why I hate this test. Let's go to that one. Nothing. Let's go to that different one. Okay, let's switch them. So it's charging up and then it goes to overload or infinite. I'm telling you, man, this is a pointless test. It's taking a charge and it's discharging. When it does negative, see, that means it's discharging. Switch them. It should be charging up. It's just a stupid test. Doesn't tell us anything. But also the problem is this meter we're using. So let's go on the fluke. We're, we're going to ohms, same thing. So these meters are awesome because they have auto range. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same test, but it's gonna put us in the range we want. And see it's showing it charge. And on the fluke meter, it will charge to infinite. It'll just keep charging forever, showing that it's taking a charge. We flip them around. It's discharging. So this ohm meter test is good to tell if you have a straight up blown one, which happens a lot. But to tell if you have a capacitor that's not reaching full capacity, it could be causing start issues, that test does nothing for you. So it's still a test that you should see done, but like I said, it's only going to give you a dead giveaway if this thing is blown up inside and not working at all. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.